Hello, greetings and salutations everybody out there in YouTube land. It's your buddy Chopadon coming at you with another episode of Chop Talk brought to you by the one, the only DFSArmy.com. Your one-stop shop for everything daily fantasy sports. From all the sports covered to content to tools to optimized lineups to coaching. If you are looking for a way to get to be a better player, why not wrap all of that together and gain access to our 100% accessible coaches across the industry from every sport that we cover from MMA to PGA to NFL to MLB. That's what we do inside DFSArmy.com. So take a look in the link in the comment section of the video. Use coupon code CHOP so that when... We adjust our prices in a few weeks. You don't get left in the dark. You've actually been grandfathered in at the lower price point. Jump today and get access to the coaching so that you can see the video I'm getting ready to make here in a little bit for our VIPs. I get questions all the time about this lineup page and XWOBA, WOBA, differential, ISO, K, percentage, all this sort of stuff, and how do we use it? So I'm going to turn around and record another video showing people how to pick players off the main slate tonight using this page alone and what it tells you. But for you guys that are used to the way I do things, we're going to dive into the research station. So you need to be a VIP to come back and gain access to that video and unlock it. So again, Go to the comment section and take a peek. Uh, starting pitching today, obviously, we're going to go to the DFSA grade and take a look at Max Scherzer's overwhelming advantage over the rest of the pitchers. But can we pay the $12,200 on FanDuel to roster 14000 on DraftKings and then afford a second pitcher? Oh, man, I don't know. I will tell you this, rule of thumb, generally you do pay up for pitching on FanDuel and you look to come down into that second tier a little bit in uh, DraftKings so that you can get a couple of decent pitchers as opposed to having to take Scherzer and then Matt Harvey or something ridiculous like that. You're and it generally going to be a little bit better off staying in that upper tier one, uh, upper tier two, lower tier one type pricing on DraftKings. But for FanDuel, we do have to justify paying all the way up most times. However, maybe there is a pathway down off of $12,000. When I go to take a peek down here at all the $8,000 guys, I'm intrigued. So let's see if we can't find a couple of those to mix and match. Because again, baseball is not a one lineup sport in my opinion. I like making three to five lineups, sometimes six, seven, eight lineups in a night, taking multiple shots on multiple different offenses and using a, vi a mix of pitchers so that if one gets blown up, he wasn't necessarily everywhere in my lineups. In my opinion, if you're doing just one lineup, you're starting to do it wrong. Baseball's too volatile. You can go on big, long, massive losing streaks that way. And if you make three, four, five different lineups, you're generally going to have something do okay on a given night. And you, if you contest, if you order or structure your contests in a way that you do get paid off fairly well on those, you can recoup a lot of that damage just by getting a little bit lucky along the way. That's what baseball rewards. And it just takes a, you know, a, a little bit smarter game plan these days than used to be three years ago into attacking a slate. So let's talk a little bit about that as we go and find some secondary pitchers because there's no question that Scherzer is the lead dog on this slate. When I take a peek, um, I've got a, a 600, what, a 609K score to compete. You can't compete with that. So I'm going to drop down. I'm going to see a 430 out of uh, Godly. What I'm doing is I'm adding K percentage uh, on the opponent to K percentage of the pitcher. 430, and I take the decimal uh, place out. 420. 460 is pretty good out of Mad Bum. 480 out of Carlos Martinez. 460 out of Chad Cool. 450 out of Tyler Skaggs. This little middle area is probably about where I'm headed. Now, if I wanted to pick on uh, probably the Padres here at the 25% K percentage level, with that uh, gets me a 450 out of uh, Tyson Ross. That's a little bit viable, but let's go compare his prices. Tyson Ross down here at 7400 I'd probably rather pay. I don't know if I'd pay all the way up for Skaggs, but I'd probably, I, I'm not going to pay up for Cool. I'd probably take 7300 and Carlos Martinez. If I was going to pay in the mid-8s, I'd probably take the 460 on uh, Mad Bum. And when I scroll over here, well, screwing up the spreadsheet. My apologies. Scroll over here and look at the Vegas lines. I see that Mad Bum has a minus 150. Tyler Skaggs has a minus 150. Kyle Hendricks has a minus I'm not really into those. I'm not a fan of uh, Carlos Martinez being the dog, so I might opt over for Mad Bum as my secondary pitcher, being that we've got a similar K score, and we've got, well, we got to pay up a little. These are the two. For me, these are the two. This is where I'm probably going. So I would run Scherzer in most of my lineups, and then the other half of my lineups I'd probably split between Mad Bum and Carlos Martinez. Um, I might throw, like I said, some of the other mentionables in there, but the bottom line is I'm going to spread it out a little bit but have most of my exposure to Max Scherzer. Now, when I'm looking at lower DFSA grades for bad pitchers, where'd I go? I'm looking under 40, maybe under 50, so I come all the way up to a Kyle Hendricks. 
Um, and I'm going to try and pick on these guys most of the time. So I'm writing down L.A., Chicago, St. Louis, San Francisco, yuck, Cincinnati, yuck. Um, Toronto, I don't know. Arizona, maybe. Okay, so those are the offenses that I wrote down. L.A., Chicago, St. Louis, San Francisco, Cincinnati, and Arizona. And I'm going to go searching for hot bats through my trends tab. Once it kicks in, now I've taken out the Oakland and San, uh, Chicago game, obviously, being that it was rained out. Rained out before it rained. Premature call there, but it was probably going to rain anyway. That's why they called it. I'm looking at the trending Woba tab, and I'm going to go all the way down here, and first thing I'm going to do is cut this bad boy down a little bit. Go greater than the standard 350 today, just for shits and giggles. And what we're going to wind up doing is we're going to look through these guys and see where are we. Are we going to see a lot of repeat? There's you know, a couple of guys that are hitting all right. Uh, I see some L.A., only two L.A.s. I see a Cincinnati, only one Cincinnati. That's not a good sign for Cincinnati. I might scratch them off the list on that alone. St. Louis, St. Louis, uh, St. Louis, three St. Louis guys. Arizona, 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 four guys there. Chicago, Chicago. I mean, okay, it looks like a pretty wide open slate. We got a lot of, there's no dominant team necessarily that is in such a great position that we have to pay attention and just stack them and then worry about everybody else later. What we can do now is we can start sifting through these plays. We can look at LAA first, and I'll give you the list of playables. It's going to be whoever shows up on here. Trout, Kinsler, Calhoun, Chris Young, if he plays. There's your answer. If I go to Chicago Cubs, Bryant, Baez, Almora, and Russell. Yes, it's that simple. I'm just giving you a list of guys that you can pick from. Now, you're going to mix and match them on your own. I'll tell my VIPs uh, who I'm keying on and what I'm doing. But you guys out here in Freeland, you're getting a lot right here just by looking at these guys as I click through them. Uh, San Francisco Giants, we'll see if they're worth it. Oh, Sandoval, Cutchin, Posey, Kelby Tomlinson, if he starts. It's a very, very small sample size. And then we'll kick into Cincinnati. We should expect to see Vod Oh, look, there are a few. Hot damn. They were just lower DFSA grades, didn't make the front page. So it looks like Cincinnati is viable today. And now we're rounded off a little bit of Arizona. If you can't pick from those six offenses and find winning lineups, then the slate just wasn't meant for you today. You don't need to get contrarian. You can play with the normal, rather obvious stuff and see if you can't fit some of those into a Scherzer lineup as well. What we've done is we've just broken down for you how to find those key bats, how to find... Uh, the the weaker pitching and then the stronger pitching on the slate. And we've done all of that in about 10 minutes. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to kick off the Oakland and Chicago game again, and you're going to run down these tabs and take a peek at who you like best, salaries that you like. Like you might take a Pablo Sandoval or a Randall Gritchick, being that they're cheap, that might help you get Max Scherzer. You might take a Yadier Molina. You might even look down here to Domingo Santana if he starts, Manny Pena if he starts. Not really 100% sure how that's going to work out for you, but they are hot in their smaller sample sizes, perhaps. Uh, Santana, 40 at bats, 350 Woba is not terrible. Manny Pena, 41 at bats, 406, a little bit better, but it'll be hitting lower in the lineup. You got to focus on these green guys if that's who you're going to want to run with Max Scherzer. And if it spreads you out, just run it in cash and be fine with the fact that you're taking a chance. Uh, on hitting, you know, capping your ceiling a little bit, hoping everybody else falls flat. But these days, enough people are going to stack against you. Somebody's going to hit. I don't see you winning a five-man league doing that, or a 10-man league, or a 20-man, because somebody in there is going to hit their stack and beat you. You can maybe eke into some 50-50s, but you're not going to win them very often. If you're after upside contests, three-man, five-man, 20-man, 100-man league type stuff, GPPs, of course, you're going to have to stack a little bit to parlay those points and focus. If you've got an offense that scores 10 runs tonight, you need three or four bats in it if you're going to win because, again, somebody else is going to get Sometimes you can get around it and get into the 50-50s, but you're not going much higher than that if you don't stack a little bit. So, yes, I tell my guys inside slack, stacking in baseball is okay. Even in cash games, you just sprinkle in a little bit of upside so if your stack really hits, you take off right up a leaderboard and you end up making back more than double, triple, quadruple your money, you make back even more. That's what pays for the bad nights when the stacks don't work. And again, if you want deeper insight into those types of concepts, you need to become a VIP inside DFSArmy.com. Use code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Trigger the 10% discount off before prices go up. Grandfather yourself in today. Tomorrow's Freebie Friday. Hope to see you back again tomorrow. But hope to see you become a VIP today, if not very, very soon before the prices go up. This has been Chop Talk. This has been your buddy Chop -a Dong. And I will see you when I see you. It's my reminder to you, keep your head down, keep your eye on the ball, and we'll see you when the ball flies over the fence. Take care, guys.